All right, so what I want to do today is I want to take a look at shear stress in beams. And, and typically, um, what we've done so far in strength of materials is basically just look at, at an average shear stress, where the average shear stress like tau equals V over A. Well, in this case, what we're looking at here is the general formula for shear stress at any point in, in a beam or a given beam due to a shear load, uh, V, is given as this you know tau equals VQ over IT formula. Right, and, and here we know that V is going to be our shear, okay? Okay. That's just the shear force in, in the beam. Um, we get that from our shear moment diagram. And we also have Q, where Q is the first moment of area. And this is sort of a, a little bit of a funny term, but what it is is if we have some shape that we're trying to find uh, shear stress in, right? So here's our shape, here's the, the neutral axis. And let's say we want to find the shear stress you know, at a certain point up here. Well, what we're going to do is we're going to take all the area above that point, and we'll call this you know, A prime. We're going to take the distance to the centroid of that point. So let's you know, make some distance here like y bar, and that is going to be our first moment of area. So what we're going to do is we're going to basically say, you know, here q in this case equals a prime times y bar, okay? So that's our first moment of area, and it can get complicated when you get shapes that aren't rectangles, okay? So we're going to boil that down a little bit, but let's keep moving here. So we also have i. i is the second moment of area, or also we've known it as the moment of inertia, okay? So this is, again, another, another formula you can go um, look up in general. Um, you can go derive this based on uh, calculus, but in general what we've done you know, to this level is just looked at you know, base times height cubed over 12, that type of thing for a rectangle. Okay? And then T here is the thickness where you're finding the shear. Okay, so this is the general formula. and. If you get a complicated section, you have to go through this formula. If you if you're looking at, you know, at um, looking at the shear stress to maybe in between these two surfaces here, so that you can glue them together or something, you're gonna have to go through this formula. But in general, if if we're just designing a beam, we're not gonna just default to our tau equals v over a. It would in fact, this is an average. We can't just default to using this. What we really need to do is we need to come back to this formula to solve. Okay. But for you know a good majority of, of the time for what we're doing, we can just derive this for basic shapes. So in a basic strength and materials class for basic questions, maybe the, on the FE, you're going to go to that. So I'm just going to scroll down here and look at some basic shapes that I've already drawn in. So let's look at those. And here's some basic shapes that we're going to take a look at. Okay. So for example, we might have a rectangle. Okay. So here's our rectangle. You know, we could have a circle. Here's our circle. Or we could have like a wide flange section. And when we do that formula out, that VQ over IT formula, we're left with basic formulas here, so, which I'm just going to write out here. So the tau max, or the maximum shear stress in a rectangular section, if we derived that formula, VQ over IT, we're just going to get three halves V over A. So in other words, you know, if we have this section, right, the shear stress distribution might go from, uh, say, zero at the ends, right, to some peak point where the average shear stress would be V over A, but this point here is going to be our max. Okay. Um, similarly, for a circle, you know, we might have some distribution where, again, it, it, it peaks kind of in the middle here. Okay. So if we have zero at each end, we're going to have some max at the middle. And what that's going to be, it's going to be tau max equals uh, four thirds V over A. So for given you know shapes, when we know the shapes, this gets easier because we can just really solve for this tau max if, if that's all we're looking at. Sometimes again, if you're looking at plies between, you have to start looking at more complicated things. For the, but for the basics, this is where it is. Okay. For wide flange sections, a lot of times what's done, uh, especially like in steel design, is we say our tau, and really what we're seeing here is this is like the average web. Okay. So the average. Uh, of the web is just going to be um, basically the shear over the depth times the thickness of the web. And that's going to be a decent approach because in this case, you know, again, if we're looking at shear distribution or shear stress distribution, we're going to have a little bit of stress here, but then once it gets into the web, it's actually going to shoot up, right? And then come back down. And th so this might be our, our tau, you know, our tau distribution where really what we're looking for is some point here. Let me draw that a little bit better. There we go. So some point here, this is going to be like our average 
web shear. And those are the values that are typically used. So if all you're doing is looking for the max or the design stress, right, that's what these are gonna be. So these will be our design shear stresses, right? They're, they're basically the peak stresses, the peak shear stresses that you'll see uh, in these beams. So let's go ahead and what we'll do is we'll take an, we'll look at an example. So I'm just gonna scroll down here again. So if this is what we're given, right? So let's say we are given this problem and what we wanna find is the max shear stress in each of these sections. Okay, and you'll notice that I wrote in here the max design is shear stress, right? So what we're looking at here is tau max, tau max, and the tau for the, the web average, all right? So what we can do is we can go through that and actually go right ahead and plug some numbers in. And, and the biggest thing that you wanna do here is, is just to be consistent with units. So if we're looking at section one, which is the rectangle, right? What we're gonna do is we'll just say um, tau max equals three halves V over A. So in this case, what do we get? We get three halves V, in this case our maximum shear is a half a kilonewton, and I'm just gonna change that to 500 newtons uh, divided by our area. And our area here is just 40 millimeters times 10 millimeters. And when we do the math out here, what, what I get is I get a, a maximum shear stress of about 1.9 megapascals. Okay, so that's our answer for part one, part two, like let's section two, let's look at the circle, right? This is our tau max in this case, is gonna be the, using the formula four thirds V over A. So here, what do we get? We get four thirds times V again, 500 newtons. That's our maximum shear, or shear force based on the shear diagram, a half kilonewton it is 500 newtons. And I could write that in there, you know, this is a half, of a kilonewton, okay, which comes right from either here or here. Both of them will give us uh, the same thing, okay. And then we can divide this by. I'm going to write the area as pi times r squared. In this case, if 40 is the diameter, then we know that this r is going to be 20 millimeters. And we, what we can do here is pi times 20 millimeters squared, okay. So if I plug those numbers in, I get you know, about 0 0.53 megapascals. So, you know, smaller number, but what we know here is this, this has a lot more area, you know, in the circle than, than our rectangle does, okay? And lastly, you know, if we look at this last one here, I'm just gonna move up a little bit so that I have a little bit more room. Um, what do we have? We have, this is for our wide flange, and what we're really looking for here is our, our design stress is gonna be tau of the web, and what's this? This is just V over DTW. So here we have 500 newtons divided by the depth or 40 millimeters and times the thickness of two millimeters, thickness of the web. And what we get here is a shear stress of 6.3 megapascals or, or right about there. Okay, so th these are our answers, right? Nothing too crazy, nothing too complicated. But what we did, what we did basically was we took the maximum shear force from the shear diagram, plugged it into our, our, our equation here to get the beam design stress, really. That, that's what we're looking for. And this is gonna be our maximum stress in a rectangular section, maximum stress in a, a circular section, and maximum stress in the wide flange section based on the dimensions and the properties given. So that's kind of a real basic approach just to, you know, this design shear stress, what we're looking for is the maximum or the average web, you know, but this is what you're typically gonna design the beam for, right? And unless you really start getting into uh, nailing composites together or some crazy shapes or unsymmetric shapes, these should be sufficient for a lot of the problems that you do. So that's the starting point. And, uh, you know, I hope this helps at least point you in the, the right direction as you get started here. Uh, if you're looking for more complicated versions where you actually go over VQ over IT, drop me a comment and, and maybe I can post some. All right. But hopefully this helps you at least with the basics. And uh, if you have questions, let me know. Otherwise, keep working hard. Keep moving onward and upward.